Excellency, I think I'm honored to take part in the swearing ceremony of the Peace Corps volunteers who will be serving in the health sector throughout Ghana. Peace Corps came to Ghana in 1961 when the then president of Ghana, Dr. Kwame Nkrumah, embarked on his accelerated development plan in education. President J.F. Kennedy had the goal of establishing the Peace Corps, which was to build the capacity of host nations and to promote international peace and friendship through the exchange of culture. Through the decades, Peace Corps expanded its activities to include environment, health, water and sanitation, and enterprise development. Today, I am pleased to know that Peace Corps is still in the one critical areas of human development, which is health. Your Excellency, I'm told that this particular group of volunteers trained in the health sector are going to serve with the following in mind, improving maternal and child health, assisting in reducing the incidences of malaria through prevention methods, improving water, sanitation and hygiene practices, as well as increasing knowledge to prevent the spread and mitigate the impact of HIV and AIDS. These volunteers are going to work where it matters most, in various communities throughout Ghana to promote and support national efforts to ensure that all Ghanaians live long and healthy lives. I also understand that these volunteers have been adequately prepared by a formidable training team who equipped them with the right knowledge, skills, and attitudes that will enable them to function professionally and culturally in their various communities. I have no doubt that they have also been prepared appropriately in some Ghanaian languages and culture to enable them fit in and interact with members of their communities. I was amazed with the type of languages you are trained them to try to learn to speak, some of which I have never tried even to understand a single word in. We have several languages culturally in our country, cutting across the south to the north, several of them, and which community has a small language. Where I come from, we have a different language, though it is part of the Cree language, but ours is a little bit different. So if you have different dialects, several languages in within. We just witnessed you speaking some of these languages. Now I can assure the volunteers that if you continue to use the language you have acquired at your sites, you'll be accepted as members of, the, of your respective communities. It will be very difficult to speak any language in Ghana. So when you get closer to the people and you get yourself committed, they want to speak the language, I believe you, in a month, you should be able to speak very well. Your integration into the communities will ensure your safety and security. It will also give you the opportunity to affect people's lives positively in both formal and informal settings. Indeed, there are thousands of Ghanaians whose lives have been positively affected as a result of the activities of Peace Corps volunteers. And I bear testimony to this fact. Again, I commend you not only for your spirit of volunteerism, but also for accepting to serve in the most rural and underserved communities, where even some Ghanaians will refuse to go. In about two months now, we were trying to recruit medical officers, and we we're doing online recruitment, applications online, we will call, we interview you. So we deliberately closed the um, traffic to facilities in the south of the country. Quite a large number of medical staff are sitting in Kumasi and Accra. 
I can say about 50% of our trained, renowned Kenyan doctors are all in these two big cities. We got a few to apply to go to the north, the upper east region where Dagari is. Sorry, upper west where Dagari is, upper east. When we did an assessment to look at the returns, eight chose upper west. Only three attended the interview. Last year, we interviewed and posted eight to northern region. Only one actually assumed duty there. So ourselves in Ghana, the medical profession, shy away from going to places where we need the most. And I think I'm enthused with your spirit of volunteerism and your commitment to serve in rural communities in our country. Remember that you are role models, change agents, and most importantly, ambassadors of the United States of America. You must live beyond reproach. The adults, youth, and particularly the children will look up to you as the amantes and adopt your lifestyles. For them, everything from America is good. Remember this as we carry out your day-to-day -day activities. But I'm also amused at the type of clothing you have put on this morning. <laughs> you wouldn't have much options when it comes to what you should wear. You can't be wearing this far off. Some parts of the year, even here in Accra, you can't be wearing this easily and be more comfortable in the type of things that you are wearing. When I got in here, I was asking myself, who are these white Ghanaians <laughs> 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 who have come to meet with us? But I'm glad that you've embraced some part of our culture. My teachers who taught me in school I mentioned earlier, there was a particular type of food they would never miss coming to the dining hall with us. Fried plantain, the ripe one, with beans. That was a delicacy for them. In church in London when I was training, in church I met some Americans and they were always in my home. They adored the very traditional, very common food in Ghana, fufu and peanut soup. I believe soon you'll be introduced to some of these things. Those of you going to the north will begin to eat tz. <laughs> that is how we call it. I you might have tasted tz before. Everybody's nodding. It's also a delicacy across the country. And in here, you will get all types of foods that you want to eat. Notwithstanding, if you want to eat American, you can find American in Ghana. But I don't think that you want to do wherever you go. You probably may not see the outcome of your efforts today. By years to come, when you return to Ghana and someone in an office runs to say, you taught me how to grow different varieties of crops, especially during the dry season, and it has helped me to improve upon the nutrition of my household, you will see that your service has not been in vain. This is a true testimony. But I want to believe that you all come back to Ghana one day and you meet people. When I was young, I had opportunity to actually teach in Nigeria. I left there to go to London came back to work in Ghana. And at the time when I became a Deputy Minister of Finance, years back, I went to Abuja. And I had a podium to speak. The full morning, they flashed me front page. Then within hours, the same conference room, a young man approached me. I said, sir, you taught me economics in school. I couldn't hold my tears and he was working for a big corporate in Abuja. He, he continued talking. Say, without you, I wouldn't have been here. I said, thank you, young man. We became friends, and after today, we exchange um, messages, and we chat. I became so happy of what I should have done somewhere. And I believe 
you come back. Or even in the States, one day you might meet some people you may meet in Ghana here who will tell you how you have impacted on their lives. Let me take this opportunity to wish you abundant goodwill, God's blessing, and success in your new endeavors at your respective sites. May the friendly cooperation between Ghana and America continue to grow stronger and flourish by your presence in the communities and your activities therein. Congratulations. Long live United States Peace Corps. Long live the United States of America and long live Ghana.